Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Introduction to Agricola. Uh, this is a research workshop series presentation put on by the Medical Center Library here at the University of Kentucky on March 10th, 2021 via Zoom, coming to you from my home office slash my wife's uh, sewing room. I've um, been working here since the pandemic started. And uh, so basically, uh, my name is Jason Kinsley, and I'm an associate professor here at the University of Kentucky. I am a librarian, and I am the library liaison to the College of Ag, Food and Environment, the whole thing. So covers a lot of ground. So let's go ahead and get started. So the library database we're going to be exploring in the next hour is Agricola. Um, much of the information um, in my presentation uh, is basically it came from a webinar that um, I watched uh, in December, uh, where some librarians from from the Na uh, National Agricultural Library uh, talked about the services that they perform. And Agricola was just a, a small part of that uh, one hour presentation. And I really enjoyed it. And so um, I wanted to take that component piece and expand that out out to the hour that we have today. So, um, so one thing about uh, Agricola is is it's such a simple word, or or is it? Uh, I'm unsure if there if it's an acronym or an abbreviation, but whichever it is, it stands for the Agricultural Online Access. So that's what uh, Agricola stands for. But another uncertainty that um, I have is regarding how to actually pronounce the word. So um, you can see that there are, well, there's two camps when it comes to this topic. Um, and I've, I've been asked this many times just when I'm beginning to do a presentation. Someone, a faculty member in the front of the audience will ask me, Jason, um, how do you actually pronounce it? Is, it? is it Agricola or Agricola? And well, according to that webinar that I watched um, the, um, in December, the nice folks there at um, NAL said that um, both are fine. They love both um, pronunciations, but let me tell you, they never said the word um, agricola. They always called it agricola. So moving forward, we're going to stick to that pronunciation and we're going to throw the old agricola into the old recycling bin. Okay, so I don't think we can really start talking about uh, agricola until we've talked a little bit about the National Agriculture Library. The NAL, or National Agriculture Library, is one of five libraries that are considered national in scope. The NAL is the library for the United States Department of Agriculture, uh, the USDA. And so I'm just wondering for the folks in attendance today, can you name the other four libraries that are considered national in scope? And you can enter that in either via chat or... I cannot. Well, the four other libraries, if you're wondering, are um, the Natural Library of Education, the National Library of Medicine, National Transportation Library, and another one you might have heard of called the Library of Congress. Okay. So according to the webinar I watched in December, the physical collection of the NAL would stretch approximately eight miles. And so that would be, um, for example, the distance between the Kentucky Castle all the way to Rupp Arena as the crow flies. So that's that's a kind of a lot of, uh, of physical items. So if you can imagine that. So how about another um, trivia question? How many miles around is New Circle Road in Lexington? And I'm going to make it easy on you all. Is it A, less than 15 miles, or is it B, greater than 15 miles? Does anybody in our audience have a guess? I'm planning on walking it later today with, with one of my, um, my foot step counter and seeing how exactly. Jason, we have some A, one A, and quite a few Bs. Okay. Well, for those out there who said B, the actual answer is 19.28 miles. So that is the answer. So if you ever felt like it takes a long time to go around Lexington, that's why. 
So what is Agricola anyway? Well, the, the first thing that we really need to do is to think of it as the library catalog for the National Agriculture Library. So that's what really Agricola is. It's, it's uh, basically the library catalog like you would have at your public library or here at UK, where you go and do a search to see what exactly is in their collection. So here at the University of Kentucky, our library system has a library, has library catalog is named InfoCat Discovery. So you might have heard a librarian talk about InfoCat Discovery. That is what our library catalog name is. So our next little trivia question is, do you know who came up with the name for the UKY library catalog? Is it Coach Cal? President Capilouto? Yours truly, Jason Kinsley, or Melville Dewey? Enter your answers now. But before I answer that question, people might be asking, well, then why is Agricola listed as a library database at the University of Kentucky? That is a really good question, and we're going to answer that question here in just a moment. So to answer our question, the correct answer is yours truly, Jason Kinsley, and you're welcome. Okay, before we actually look at the Agricola database at the University of Kentucky, let's first look at the original. This is a screenshot of the interface used by the National Agriculture Library. Anyone can go to this interface and search it for free. This slide takes me back because right out of library school back in uh, 2001, I worked at the help desk in St. Louis at the company that made this product that they're using still today. The company's long disappeared, but here is the software live, live and kicking. And the, this product was very, um, had a high level of customization. And so customers could go in there and they could change anything they wanted to from the colors to adding um, different number of tabs to how the tabs are sorted. And my job was to help librarians all over the North America customize this interface. So it does take me down uh, memory lane a little bit. <clears throat> so when you're searching the free version of Agricola is actually split into two separate records. Two or two separate set of um, records or databases. So when you're searching, you're actually searching um, the National NAL Cataloging Database, which uses the Library of Congress subject headings. So when you're searching that particular um, set of records, you're, you're using that to, and you're looking for books, journals, government documents, auto visuals, et cetera. And those are mostly all held at the NAL. If you're searching the other database, um, inside that interface, you're actually searching and using the National Agriculture Library's thesaurus. And it indexes journal articles, book chapters, reports, and reprints. And it does include some links to full text. So you can click both of these boxes in the interface and search them both at the same time, but there's an asterisk. And isn't there always an asterisk? The asterisk, the asterisk is, is if you're doing really um, detailed searching using um, the source or subject heading, you need to search each one of these individually. And the terms that you'll be using are based on which um, set of subject headings or the source that they're using. So we'll talk a little bit more about this later. So the NAL sells the content of their free catalog to commercial publishers like EBSCO that add value to this content by making it and I put this in quotes, I, that's what they say, you know, earlier, easier to search. Um, so put an asterisk on that comment and we'll come back to that in a minute. So UK Library subscribes to um, um, EBSCO. And when we do that, um, basically we're getting 68 different library databases available to search under that one EBSCO search interface, okay? So libraries have the ability to purchase access to NAL data from, from other library vendors in addition to EBSCO, for example, ProQuest and others. We just happen to use EBSCO to get our content. 
So this may look familiar to some of you if you use any EBSCOhost database here at the University of Kentucky. And here in this, this, this screenshot, you can see some of the many um, options you have that you can actually search individually or all at the same time or any combination thereof. As the first one you see here is academic search complete. Um, many of you might be, um, might be aware that um, actually high school students in the Commonwealth here in Kentucky have access to this database in high school. So that interface is very familiar to them when they come here to UK. So that's one of the advantages of having a some familiar interface for students to be able to use. So here is actually what the EBSCO host um, interface looks like. And hopefully this looks familiar to you. And if you see here at the top of that um, screen uh, shot, you'll see that I'm searching Agricola and done a search in this interface. So let's dive in deeper. And the way we're gonna do that is, is we're actually gonna look at um, how the um, NAL describes Agricola on their website. Okay, so let's read through this. Um, it's a database produced by the NAL, which consists of two subsets of records. So that makes sense. We just talked about that. The first site, the first contains citations for journal articles that include abstracts. Okay, um, abstracts, as you know, are, are basically summaries of um, the full um, journal article or something about the book, to, something that gives you a basically information about what is going to be contained in the full document. The second consists of bibliographic records describing monographs, you know, books, serials, audiovisual materials, and online content from around the world. So it's not just information from the United States. Agricola includes, but is not limited to, resources available in the library. The database contains a lot of records and includes printed works from as far back as the 15th century. Okay. So Continuing on, uh, Agricola records describe publications and resources encompassing all aspects of agriculture and applied or allied disciplines, including animal and veterinary sciences, entomology, plant sciences, forestry, aquaculture, and fisheries, farming and farming systems, agricultural economics, extension and education, food and human nutrition, and earth and environmental sciences. So if you were wondering why should I or should I search Agricola, if anything that you're doing research on um, is covered by any of those topics, this database could be useful to you. So both sets of, are updated daily with newly cataloged and indexed materials. Each may be searched separately or searching them together. And I talked about that, how you could click both of those boxes if you're using the original interface. The catalog may also be accessed on a fee basis through several commercial vendors, which I mentioned is um, our EBSCO host database, either online or if, if you have a nice handy CD-ROM player. So you might be wondering, um, so in Agricola, there is basically only um, content from 1970 on. There is some before 1970, but um, not as much, um, it's not nearly um, the entire collection. So where is it? So I wanted to let you know, and this is an actual slide from the presentation I've been quoting, an untapped commodity in global research sourcing and information, the USDA National Agriculture Library. They have a picture here of the dictionary catalog of the National Agriculture Library. And basically this is a print 73 volume set that we used to use back in the day before we had the computers. So these cover records from 1862 to 1965. And believe it or not, um, it actually cover, encompasses a large um, quantity of um, foreign records from foreign countries, um, actually as much as uh, 60%. So if you're interested in information about these this kind of topics um, and you wanna find out what was going on in the rest of the world during this time period, there are lots of collections in there that will make you a happy searcher, okay? Um, so how do we get to this information? How do, how do we find it? Um, so basically it is uh, going to be in a database called the Hathi Trust. And we could talk about Hathi Trust for a long time, but um, UK is a, um, 
a partner has a partnership with Hathi, Hathi Trust, and it's a great resource. And I encourage you to go um, look and um, check it out. It's listed in our databases that are available. So Hathi Trust is the way you would get into those um, older records. So I'm just curious if any of you that are online today, have you ever used an original card catalog where you actually had to go in there and um, use your fingers and flip through little cards to find um, something that you needed or something like that? Any youngsters out there? Yes, I have. Oh, okay. So you've, you've had that experience. And um, now I don't know if you're a flea market flip uh, connoisseur, but you'll see those old catalog um, card catalogs there being turned into things as um, end tables and wine bars and things like that. So they still have a life useful after the, reti the library retires. them. Jason, I have a quick question. Absolutely. Um, I'm just wondering, does our Agricola subscription through EBSCO search both of these databases? That is or a, both of the catalogs. That is a perfect question. You read my mind because I'm just getting ready to now review what our library database EBSCO subscription says it covers. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm glad you asked that. So so what we've got here on the screen right now is when I go into um, our web pages and I click on, and I'm getting ready to click on um, our access to Agricola, um, I wanted to find out how we describe what it is we're searching. So if we look at the screen, it says, and I'm, I was going to ask you all that question, what you think this database search is based on this description. It says, citations and abstracts of materials acquired by the NAL are and cooperating institutions in the agriculture and related sciences. 90% of the records describe journal articles, book chapters, and the remaining 10% describes monographs, series, microfilms, audiovisuals, maps, thesis, patents, software, and technical reports. Coverage is worldwide. In addition, it also searches a couple other smaller collections. We get our access through the Kentucky Virtual Library. So that's, that's how we're getting access to this resource. And if you're wondering, you can also use this on a mobile device. It's a mobile access friendly. You do need to use the easy proxy or your link blue credentials to log in from off campus. The vendor is EBSCO, EBSCO host. And again, the coverage is primarily 1970 to, pr to present and it's updated monthly. So when, what I did to figure out the answer to the question that was presented is what is this searching? Is it searching both sets of the information in the original Agricola. Well, how did I figure this out? My first guess reading the comparison of um, our description and their description was yes, it contains both. So how I verified that it does indeed contain both, um, you're searching both at the same time, is that I went in there and I did searches in each individual um, part of the original Agricola. And then I found some records. And then I went back into our Agricola and I redid those searches. And um, I did find content from both of those subsets in our Agricola. So the answer is yes, it searches both of those. But that being said, if you're wanting to do high level searching using subject terms or thesaurus, you will need or want to go into the original to do those searches if that's very important for you to find exact information on a particular topic, if that makes sense. But for most of us, searching using keywords in Agricola um, in EBSCOhost is just fine. So again, that being said, so which one should I use, Jason? You, you've done told me now about the original. You told me about what we have access here at UK. And then you've even thrown in that there's something else that I can search um, through Hathi Trust to get more information from the NAL. So, well, if I would say that if you're, if you're wanting to use those subject heading or thesaurus terms for very, very detailed searching, um, then you should probably go and try and use the um, one at the um, NAL. It's free to everyone to use. It would also be probably useful for you 
Two, if you're not affiliated with UK or you graduate and you don't have access to our library databases anymore, you can still search the interface for free. Now, if you're a student or a faculty member or staff here at the University of Kentucky, um, and it's available to you, you can log into it and I recommend that you take full advantage of it with your Link Blue credentials. Um, it has a very familiar search interface. So if you're a freshman um, watching this, um, you're going to probably um, recognize that search interface and it's, it's very easy to use. And so I would, I would use our interface through EBSCO because you'll have much um, easier searching with that. Also, when you use our interface, which I'll show you here in just a little bit, um, it's connected to other UKY library databases to find full text. Um, the Agricola database does not have a large amount of full text in it, okay? It's, it's lots of it is really um, just the basic, the abstract, that kind of information. And using our interfaces can help you connect to other resources. We have other library databases where that full text might be available. So using our interface, it makes it much easier to get to that full text that you might um, really need. So again, don't forget Hathi Trust is out there for the pre-1970 materials. So now, what we're going to do next, and I want to thank you for this watching this part of the presentation, and I hope you've had enjoyed your drink of Agricola, I mean Agricola. What we're going to do is, is I'm going to bring up the actual search interface, and then I'm going to do a couple searches to demonstrate some of the things I talked about. So excuse me here while I basically switch to a web browser. Okay, hopefully you all can see my um, web browser now. We can. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is if I go to the University of Kentucky homepage, I'm sure you're all familiar with that, um, the, the library um, web pages are located underneath resources, and we are a resource for you. And if we come down here and we click on libraries, this is the main UK libraries web page, and as you will see right here in this little box that says search info cat discovery so this is our library catalog and what it does is it basically searches all of um, not all of um, it searches a majority of our our collection you can search it by just doing this library catalog holdings you can also search e-journals li library databases research guides and local collections so if i move over here to databases this has listings of um, all of the hundreds of library databases that we subscribe to. Now, what I can do is, is I can just go here. I could actually do a search in this box for Agricola, or I could come here and go underneath the letter A, or I could come here and actually see if it's in the short list of databases they have listed here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the letter A, and I'm gonna just scroll down to Agricola, and if I click on this little drop down, oops, you can see this is where I got that description information that I shared with you earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this to go to the actual database. And here we have that EBSCO um, interface that I keep talking about. And if I click up at the very top here, I can choose a database that I might want to search. So I could switch right now if I wanted to. And I said, I don't want to search curricula right now. I want to search um, academic search complete. So I can just select that, say, okay. And then you're going to see that it switches right here to a different database that I'm searching, but I'm still using the same interface, which is really, really easy, especially for um, people that don't do a lot of searching all the time. So um, basically I'm going to switch back over to curricula. 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do a search for cattle. All right. And I'm going to search for cattle. And then now you'll see that I've, I got 168,410 results. And one of the things I want you to notice that when I mentioned to you about how when another, um, when they sell the data from the NAL, the vendors try to add um, value to that content. And you can see here that they have added video results into this search interface. So this is just one way the, the EBSCO folks are trying to make this value added. So if you notice that this goes back from 1580 up to 2021. So what happens here if, if I just basically change this date to, let's just say 1800 to 1850. Oop, let me see if it'll let me, 1850. Now, I think you probably know that back in 1800 and 1850, they didn't have video. At least I don't think they did. So again, this can, might be a little confusing to um, a freshman, but I know that this is just value added that this database is trying to add to this particular database. So let me take this and we'll just um, reset. And we're going to do the search again. Oops. Got to clear this out. Now, you're going to notice that when I do this search, here is then the first record. It tells me that it's an academic journal. And it tells me um, here that basically 22,000 of them are books and I can get other information, other limiters here. If I click on this link to get to the full record, we're going to see some basic information here. Now, one thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is, is because there's so little full text here in this database, you wanna use this view now at UK um, button to be able to go out and see if there is full text available for this record. So in this example, I'm just gonna click on it. And what it does is it brings back up our InfoCat discovery interface, and it's going to try to help direct us to that information. And right now, this one's saying there's no full text available, um, but don't worry, you can also request things through interlibrary loan. And that's a topic for another day. But this is the resource that can make um, your search for full text much easier. Okay, so what I want to show you now is, is if I go back to my search results, and let's say I'm gonna limit this to full text. Now notice my results went down to 6,522 items. And notice that this, the information is coming from 1976 forward. Now, you, I mentioned that 1970 was the date. So let's see if we can make that happen. Let's see if we can get a 1970 to show up down here. And how I'm gonna do that is, is I'm gonna add another search term with an or. And I'm gonna add in here water because water shows up in a lot of documents. So let's see if water will show up in full text. So now I've got it back to 1972. So I'm gonna add one more search term just because I wanna get it back to 1970. To make my point, I'm gonna put in here my favorite search term, chickens. And there you go. Now you see that indeed there is coverage in full text back to 1970 to today. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that little search to make that happen, all right? Now the next search I wanna show you is I need to bring up the actual original EBSCO. 
So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to just type in here, just do a quick Google search on the uh, NIL. Let's go. So I should just put a crickle in there, huh? Okay, so this is that interface that I mentioned earlier. And you can see here that there's the search for books and there's the search for articles. Those are the two separate databases. Right now it's set to one of those. And I'm just gonna put in here um, a term and I hit go. And I can show you that this is how the search results come up. And there's a thousand results. And so if I want to um, basically go back here, um, I could select both of those. Um, but what I'm gonna do search both and I'm going to put in here a search term and in this search term I'm going to put in here patterns of change bunch grass because I know there's a title of a document that I want to find that just came out recently and so I'm going to do a search and with any luck And whenever you search more than one database at one time, it takes it longer to do that search. Do you see here that grazing enclosures, relevant divergent patterns of change in bunch grass, last grasslands in Western Canada is exactly what I was looking for, okay? And what it'll do is it'll send me to the publisher's site to get the full text. And that will probably cost me money because if I'm a member of the public and I'm not paying for a subscription to that particular um, journal, um, I'm gonna have to pay money. But by searching it through our library database, you will get around that because we've already purchased the content. So now I'm bragging on how we're going to go to our library database. We're going to go to our version of Agricola and we're going to find this particular um, article, right? So let, let's do that. So I come back here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, clear this um, information and I'm going to do clear this search and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to type that same search term in here patterns of change bunch grass and I'm going to select here title and when I do a search it's not in here very frustrating when you're trying to do a live demo and the particular item you're looking for doesn't show up. Does anybody in the audience have an idea of why this particular item did not show up? If this was a very new publication. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to show you something. I'm going to choose and I'm going to add academic search complete to this search. So I'm searching both. And I'm going to do the same search again. Well, look at that. Here is the exact thing I am looking for. And as promised, this one has the full text available where I can click right here and get the full text without paying for it. So that is really good. So it's, sometimes we get questions from patrons and say, why couldn't I find this, Jason? You said that I could find that information in Agricola. This is what I think. If you notice that this is from 2021, sometimes what happens is that the library vendors, the EBSCOs of the world, they update particular databases with batch loads of um, new content. Obviously, the academic search complete has been updated. The um, agricola version of EBSCO um, has not. So I would assume and be very um, 
pretty sure that if I come back here in a few months, that information will be available in Agricola. But as of right now, by expanding my search and to include Academic Search Complete, I found the record. And I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to throw that out there to show you that searching isn't is never really truly simple, but it gets easier all the time. So with that, I think we, I will conclude my presentation and I will be happy to answer any questions or clear up anything that I might have confused you on. I have a question. So what would be your recommendation for um, other like agricultural databases for searching for like mental health of farmers. So now we have, you know, Psych Info and PubMed and I've already searched those. So what, is there another agricultural database besides Agricola well, or would that be your? Yeah, that's a, no, that's a great question because there's always um, content out there that there's, there's, there's like coverage in databases. A lot of time they overlap, but also there's, there's databases that are kind of more um, um, directed toward certain angles on topics. Um, one thing that we can do sometimes is, is that we can actually go into the other field that might overlap, you know, that, that particular field, either psychology or sociology, and look at some of their databases and then do searches in those databases as well, where their content would overlap with um, research <clears throat> having to do with agriculture. <clears throat> there, there's also, a, um, there might be information on this topic, and I'd like to put a plug in for um, Beth Reeder and Annabelle Smith's upcoming um, webinar in this series having to do with searching um, extension publications and things like that because there can be information done um, through extension offices on this topic for example so that might be a good location to go out and take a look. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to bring up um, our library guide that we have created that Annabelle has done a great job our graduate intern done a great job along with Beth Reeder on creating. Let me just um, get there. <clears throat> so this is the Cafe Library Resources Library Guide, Research Guide, and it's basically considered um, a, um, a web page of sorts that um, covers information regarding to um, information for the College of Ag, Food and Environment. Um, as of last year, the library location for um, the College of Ag, Food and Environment was closed. So now we're more of a virtual operation. So this is kind of like our new web pages. And here you can see, um, for those who are wondering, this is me here, Jason Kinsley up by the giraffe. Um, this is Beth Reeder that I mentioned um, a moment ago and Annabelle Smith. So here on that particular page, if we go to, let's say um, I'm an undergraduate or a graduate or a researcher or I'm a community member, you can choose kind of what portal you want to go into. But what I'm going to do here is if I just click on I'm an undergraduate um, and I want to look at some databases that might be relevant. We have a list here of databases that we could go through and kind of look at your topic and try to figure out if they would be applicable for the topic that you're looking at. Maybe you would be interested in looking and doing a search on dissertations, theses that have been written on this topic, which I'm sure there have been. So we could go into this ProQuest database and probably find information on that mental health topic in agriculture, probably. Um, we could go into CABI abstracts and global health to find out more information on that topic. Um, again, we have a great listed here, but uh, um, other things would be probably uh, maybe even we could look at web of science. You mentioned you looked in PubMed, but this is a great way to start to try to look at databases with your liaison for your for that area to find out which of, which of these databases might be helpful for my search. Also, you can come here and then we have a list if we click on it that will take you out to a bigger, broader list of relevant databases that might be helpful um, for you. And here it comes up and Annabelle and Beth have done a great job here. And here's a 
bigger list that we could even expand to, to try to see if we could find something that could be helpful for you. And there's even ways to go out and do searches in like um, a library catalog called WorldCat that basically searches library catalogs throughout the country, North America, to see if there's been books written on that topic. So there's lots of um, places that we could start out. And I'd be happy to talk with you a little bit more after the, the presentation to um, do that. Um, also, I want to mention that um, that you can find and talk with myself, Beth, or Annabelle um, by coming here and getting our contact information. It has our um, contact information, our phone number, email. Email is probably the best since um, because we're all working remotely right now. But also, you can come here and if you want, we can schedule an appointment via Zoom to talk about your question. Did that help? Yes, that was great. Oh, Thank was that you T so TMI, much. maybe. <laughs> no, no, that was great. Let's let you know, give give librarians a question. They'll talk for an hour. So <laughs> any any other questions? That was a really again, that was actually a really good question because you gave me the opportunity to go in and show off our cafe database. And if you if um, anybody would like to we could put that URL here for um, our library guide um, in the chat for anybody out there who might want it, who's watching this later. Well, if there's not any other questions, I'll leave you back to your your lunchtime. And thank you for so much for you all for spending your lunch with me today. And again, um, come back next week and um, check out the presentation that uh, Beth and Annabelle are doing on those um, really great resources that are created by our extension office. <laughs>